Hi everyone, Dr. Schwant with Dreaming Big. Uh, our guest for this show is, uh, uh, we're coming from Kensington, Kansas, and uh, the guest is the man, <laughs> Don Weens. So uh, Mr. Don Weens, uh, uh, you know, a staple of the community here in Kensington and a uh, former teacher of mine. Um, you know, I, I, it's hard to explain you because you're just everything in the community, you know. So, and, and, and every time I get to come back and, and see you, it's, it's phenomenal, you know. So it, it, there's so much wisdom there, and um, it's just phenomenal. So thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you. So we'll, we'll start out uh, just as we always do with our interviews. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, and, uh, and let's briefly summarize what you do. <laughs> briefly summarize. Yeah. Well, I've been here in the school system since 1964, still at it. I haven't retired. People keep saying, well, when are you going to retire? I said, if I retire, I have to find something else to do. They shut down the town. So that's then. me. Well, I don't know about it. shut down the town, but they'd have to find somewhere for me to go, you know, stay out of the way. Yeah. So, no, and, and I've been uh, teaching and I'm athletic director and take care of the football field and do those kinds of things and I've coached. And so just a lot of involvement with the community and, and it's, it's home to me, even though I didn't, I wasn't born here. But I came here right out of college and have been here ever since. Oh, you were you were actually a kid at some point then. Yeah, I was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wow, that's that's a long time. I guess I didn't even I wouldn't even thought about how long you've been here. And um, so, as 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 Mr. Weens, as a teacher, uh, you know, I, I just remember I had you in a few classes, and the main one I remember is uh, the computer class. I'm okay. trying to remember. That one, and that was that's the one I remember. And I remember being in there with with Donald Dodds, and I, I remember, <laughs> I think we got in a few a few times we got in a little trouble. And then as as I was here, email was just coming out too. Mm -hmm. and I remember that, and that was probably not a fun time as a teacher. Um, and the chat room, so too. I remember. I don't know why I just thought of that, and I remember them being in the the, the computer lab over there. Um, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to ask you. This is more of my thank you to have you on here. Thank you for what you've done, really what you've done for the community, what you did for me, what you continue to do. And I think even when, even when you're gone, which will probably be another hundred years, right? <laughs> well, we hope not quite that You're long. still going to have a legacy that I think will live on because everybody will remember. So they'll remember the, the Mr. Weens, the Mr. Beerleys, you know, the Mr. Yoxels, the, the Mr. Van Lunens of the world, the Mr. Letchers of the world, like the Mrs. Hardacres, like in my mind, those names are just, they're special. And I don't, I don't say anyone who's had you as a teacher or any involvement, I don't know how they couldn't have made any, it made a positive impact on their lives. So um, I, wanted to, I wanted to get from you though, as, as a parent, I mean, you've had wonderful children. Um, um, I think they're still wonderful, right? I think so, yeah, yeah we, we'll say they are. Um, no, they are. <laughs> but you've had wonderful children, a wonderful impact on, on, on kids here in Kensington. I want to get some, some of your wisdom. How do you do it? What do you do? And how do you shape a young person and continue to shape them? Well, I think probably the, the most important is that you care about them. And while we were listening to some of the other interviews, to me, providing stability. And I think that's where a lot of young people, not just foster kids, but everybody, lacks in this day and age. We, we don't have a lot of stability, not just in our community, but in our families, we don't have a lot of stability in the world. And these kids, to me, they need somebody. They need somebody that says, you know, this is what you need to do, or this is the way you need to go, or this is the way it is. And of course, my son Darren will tell you, you know, Dad, you never gave me a chance. I couldn't get in trouble because you were there watching, you knew what was going on, and, and you wouldn't let me. And I said, well, yeah, that's probably true. But I said, the other side of this is you knew where you stood. And I think in, in the foster system or the, or the school system, I think young people need to know that. They need to know, this is where I stand. This is, this is why I matter. This is why it's important to me. And so, you know, if, if somebody doesn't matter, then there's really not a lot of life that's worth living. And we've talked about that with, you know, there's no way in the world that I can imagine being 12, 13, 14 years old and not being wanted by my parents or by people that I've lived with and so forth. It's just impossible for me to think that or to, to realize that kind of a feeling. 
And I think one of the things with the, with the foster system that happens with people, with kids coming into a community our size, is that they're scrutinized very closely. You know, you couldn't get in trouble oh, everybody. without everybody knowing it. Yeah. You know, if you did something, everybody knew it. Mm-hmm. And for some, for some kids, that's a real problem because they've been hiding, you know, hiding behind whatever feelings they've got and nobody really cared enough to say, hey, this isn't the way to go. Here, somebody's going to tell you, you know, you're out running around, then somebody's going to tell your parents, foster parents, whatever, hey, did you know Jamie was out doing this? Or do you know what he was doing? And so it's, it's something that, yeah, maybe gets upsetting sometimes and maybe is a problem, but it's also a positive thing, I think. Yeah, no, that's, that's extremely powerful. I, I don't even know how to respond as I was listening. You know, I, you can just tell how much the message you're, dis, you're, you're expressing here is, is special. Like, it's powerful. Um, and I remember even as a, as a kid here, like, uh, there's certain people you know, like, if you upset them, they're going to yell at you. Mm-hmm. Um, like for you, it was one. I don't remember you really yelling at people. Like I think I remember you getting. I think a couple times. I remember getting a little heated, but like <laughs> it was one of those. I don't think we wanted to upset you. It was more for the respect piece. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, we can't upset. We can't upset the man. You know, like uh, we didn't think that at that time. But you know, it was like yeah. we can't. We can't disappoint him. You know, like uh, you know, it's Mr. Weems. You know, like uh, so. And I think that was the presence, and and that's something. You know, I think as as a father now. You know, when, when I, whenever I'm trying to, when I'm interacting with people, I try to have in the back of my mind, like, what if my little girl was here watching my interaction here? What mm-hmm. would I do? Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it's almost like, what would, how would Mr. Weens or something like that, you know, react? And, and uh, so very powerful presence. And, and I think when we come back, we'll do a commercial break here. We come back, let's continue some of this discussion and some of your powerful message. And I'll tell you what, I'll be quiet when we come back. <laughs> and then I'll let you talk because what, you, what you're saying is very powerful. So... Uh, so we'll take a brief commercial break. We come back. Uh, we'll continue our discussion with uh, with the man. All right. Welcome back to Dreaming Big. So we're we're here with uh, the man, uh, uh, Don Weens. And you know, I, I'm going to cut out the Don piece. We talked a little bit before about using it. I'm just saying, Mr. Weens, it's too weird. I can't do it. <laughs> Uh, there's too much respect there, so Mr. Weens, so, or the man, I'll say that one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, shaping the lives of, of, of kids and, and some of the experiences you've had. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to let you talk. So I can just be mesmerized <laughs> of all the wisdom that, that I'm receiving here. So. You're just guided. I think a lot of it is you have to care. You care about people as people. And, you know, as, as a teacher, a lot of times it's, it's easier to like the kids that respond in a positive way, the kids that catch on easily and, and not the ones that you have to uh, you know, spend time on discipline or time on saying, hey, you know, you need to buckle down or you need to do this. But I think, you know, if, if somebody realizes that you truly care about them as a person, that they'll respond. And... One of the things that I've learned in my many, many years is that sometimes we don't take time to listen. You know, as teachers, one of our training aspects is that we are supposed to impart the knowledge. You know, we're supposed to let you know this is what it is and this is what goes on and this is what you need to know. But sometimes you have to uh, learn from from the kids. You know, learn from them and say, hey, you know, what I know or what I feel or what I think is important as well. And I, we kind of get caught up with it. And as you get older, you'll probably realize the same thing that, hey, this is the way it is. You know, I've figured this out, so I'm going to tell you that this is the way you ought to do this. And it may not be that way. It might be a situation where you need to look at it and adjust and change and and get some ideas. And so... As a teacher, a lot of times from, from your students, you get this thing of, hey, I've got things to learn too. When you go to college and you graduate, you think, okay, I've got it. And the first year or two or three of teaching, you really find out that you don't. You find out you don't know a whole heck of a lot. Kind of like as a parent. You think, yeah, I know what to do as a parent. 
And after you have your first child, you realize you don't know much of anything. And, and you need to learn. You need to find out, hey, this is the way I need to, need to go, or this is what I need to do, or this is how I need to do with my life. And I think another thing is, is example. You know, first of all, I've got to live with myself. I've got to live with myself and, and be the kind of person that I think I can be. And I can't tell Jamie Schwant how to act if I can't follow that same guideline. And to me, that's so important. And, you know, it's the, what is the saying? If do as I do and not as I say. And I think there's a lot to that. Yeah. Because I can tell you all kinds of things. I can tell you what you should be doing and what you should, how you should act and so forth. But if you don't see me living that way, you're not going to respect it. You're not going to change. Yeah, we hear people say we <coughs> pay lip service to that all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, to, to actually do it and demonstrate, I think that's why, that's probably one of the reasons why you and other people here are so you know, effective at it. And that's why the respect is there, right? I mean, it's because we see you doing. I think you know, so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You, you've got, you know, what is it? Walk the walk and talk the talk. And, and if you can't walk the walk, uh, your example by words is not going to mean a whole lot. And it's, it's a difficult one as, I, as I'm getting older. You know, it's, that is difficult. It's, well, you said this, but you, did you do it? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Did I need to? I took a shortcut or, uh, yeah. But then you're like, then you know when you, someone, someone asks you about it and you're like, okay, yeah, I need to do better. And, and then, then you can see people actually doing it, which like what you do and that, that helps. It reinforces yeah. it. And we all need to be brought down to earth every once in a while because there's no reason, that, there's no reason to think that we have all the answers because we don't. So who brings you down to earth? That would be that. that <laughs> now that's the question. That's what I want to find out. Who, who, who could bring you down to earth? That's, that's the, I think. Maybe Mr. Beardley? <laughs> well, he, he always does, but yeah. I, can't, I can't meet his standards of being nice. Yeah. You know, that, that doesn't work. I think. Sometimes, you know, in a classroom <clears throat> or in a family situation or in a community situation or, or whatever, you'll have somebody that comes up with an idea that maybe you hadn't thought about or comes up with some, a way of doing something that you hadn't thought about. And you think, oh, yeah, you know, I need, to, I need to look at that. I need to be open to it. And, uh, and I think that's what, you know, that's what brings you down to earth. So you have a... So you have a growth mindset. You have a lot of people that, that I think if, if you, if I was talking to someone that didn't know anything about you and you said, I've been here since the 60s, mm -hmm. you're probably, my first thought would be like, oh, he's probably doing the same thing for so long. He's not going to change. Like he's, <laughs> but, but you're sitting here talking about changing and growing and learning from, you know, 12 year old kids. Like that's powerful stuff. Like you are changing, you are adapting, you, you understand that and you're, you know, you've been here for so long, you still adapt. I think that's probably why you're still here, right? I mean, that's, and it's so effective. If you're, if you're not going to adapt, obviously, you're not going to grow. And it's interesting you mentioned the term growth mindset because I took a workshop this summer with, that was labeled growth mindset. And it stressed the importance of taking you where you're at and growing from that. Mm -hmm. and, and as a teacher, this is one of the things we struggle with. I've got a class of 21 and I have expectations for all 21 that are, you know, here are the standards. We do that. We standardize and we say everybody needs to be this and everybody needs to be that. But yet I need to sit back and look at 21 people and say, okay, here's where they're at today. There's where I'd like to see them get to. Or there's, there's how I can help them get to that point. Because that's what's important. Not that we have 23 A's or that we have all of this, that's not important. What's important is how you, Jamie, have grown from when I first started or you first started till now. And you know, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and read a lot of books and I feel like I'm listening to one right now, like a self-help book. That's what I feel <laughs> like. I bet you the people who developed the growth mindset idea, you probably did a workshop a long time ago and mentioned it and so they just stole it. <laughs> so it was probably <laughs> your idea. I don't know about that. And they just changed the wording. Yeah, you know? changed the wording. You just called it the Wayne's <coughs> mindset and yeah, they just yeah, changed it to the yeah, growth yeah, mindset. So. But, but you have to have those expectations because if, if those expectations aren't there, then there's no reason to, to grow. Let, let, let me ask you something that uh, makes me th think of this now. So you, you've been here for so long, you're a staple of the community, you get people, and we were talking with, with uh, Bruce Van Lunen, 
you get people that actually they're they're the head coach or or head basketball coach, head football coach. Heck, Jeff Yoxel is the principal. Like, then they've got you there that's a teacher. You know, that that would be kind of difficult, wouldn't it? Unless, how do you develop them? Because I think that's what you're doing. Because they're probably the same the same mindset as, as I'm in right now. The the awe of respect, you know, and you're almost developing them, even though you're kind of working for them, right? Right, right. And see, you work with them at one particular time or have people in class and then as they grow and sometimes they can become, you know, uh, you mentioned Amber Hardacre. I had Amber in class. Now Amber's on the school board. So technically one of my bosses mm -hmm. as such. But I guess I don't, I don't look at it that way. I, I, I don't look at it as, okay, there's this, there's this difference because it, it, we're all just, we're all people. We're all working for the same goals. We're all working, you know, child care or foster care or the school system, all working to help kids grow. And to me, the, the best thing that can happen is somebody graduates from school here or gets out of your class or whatever, and they're successful. Because that's, that's my success as well. You know, your success is my success. Now, the other side of this can also be true. People's failures can also say, and, and Mr. Beerley is probably one that a lot of times relates to this. This kid had a car wreck. What did I fail to do in driver's ed to teach him a better way? Okay, so what did I fail to do as a coach, as, a, as an athletic director, as a teacher? Where did I go wrong that this person didn't develop a better habit or didn't make a better choice. And I, there aren't any answers to that. You do the best you can for the situation you're in. The only time you, you have a problem is if you have, you know, you look back and say, you know, I didn't do my best. I, I didn't do what I knew to do. Then you have regrets. Otherwise, no. Well, uh, see, I, I'm kind of, a, you know, I, I, can, I, I usually don't have a problem talking. So now I'm like, I have this problem talking right now. And so it's almost one of those where I have no. I've said too much then, haven't I? No, I, I have no response besides something corny like, this is powerful stuff. Like, I don't have any other response because yeah, th this is phenomenal. And I'll remember this interview. I don't care if anyone watches it. I'll remember this interview personally because this is special. Um, and I will too because you're special. Oh, thank what you. What you've done with your life is, is really special. Oh, well, and, thank you. I appreciate and, that. And coming back here. And doing these interviews and getting people's input and thoughts and ideas means a lot. It means a lot to all of us. Well, I'm, I'm glad, and I just think the world needs to know about this little special place in Kensington and all these people that are doing great stuff. So, but uh, well, thank you, and uh, uh, we'll we'll close out the show there. Otherwise, I think we'll this would probably be like four different or five shows. <laughs> you should probably do an audio book or write a book on this so we can keep this, you know, knowledge. But uh, but thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, much appreciated. Thank you, Jamie. So, thank you, and, and that'll close out our show. Uh, so thank you for tuning in, and God bless the United States of America.